this video, I'm going to go over how to apply marker to furniture. So before you begin, you're going to want to um, just take a look at your markers before you actually go to your final drawing, um, just to look at some color combinations and see how colors work together. So you can see that's what I'm doing over um, this side of the page. And I have two types of markers. I have our, our Tombow. Uh, markers, which you can um, blend with water. So you, you can see how I created this nice effect with water, and then you can blend. And then on this side, I have my Prismacolor markers. So again, I just tested my markers first to see what I like. Uh, if you want to blend your Prismacolor markers, we recommend getting the colorless blender. Um, otherwise, you're going to see the stroke, the strokes of the marker, which I don't mind. But if you want a more blended effect, then you'll probably use Tombow or a blender using Prismacolor. To begin, you start light to dark. So if I'm applying a large area, um, to this chair, maybe I'll, I'll start with a cream color. And I'm gonna follow the contour of the chairs. So this has a rounded back. The seat rounds at the top. And then I'm gonna apply the seat a little more vertical here and I could even take a line across if I want. You can see that I'm running out of ink, which is okay, because then I'll add some more. While it's wet, you can bring in your next shade. So I'm gonna bring in this yellow, because I, I kind of really do like this, this yellow marker. And if you like the yellow marker, if you like seeing the marks, you can just keep those. But if you wanna blend them a little bit, go back to cream and I'm blending those in a bit more. left some white of the page and now I'm blending with the lighter color. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Um, if you wanted to go in a bit more bold, um, I can go in with some gold, like a mustard color, or I can go in with uh, this orange. Um, I always like this color goldenrod. I don't know why I'm always kind of attracted to goldenrod. So if you wanted to, you can come in and just add a bit of that in and then blend. Pretty orange is from Tombow. You can get to a point where you overwork your drawings. So, you know, if you don't want to do that, just kind of be really loose and quick. Um, that's fine as well. So, I think I'm pretty happy with what it looks like. And I'll go in and work on the legs. Uh, in the directions and in the instructions, talks about co coming in with a mahogany color first.
and then while it's wet, you can come in with a darker color. You want it to look more like an espresso stain. And our drawing is done. You can go back over this when you're done and, and rework some of the line work, crispen those edges. Otherwise, we're done with that drawing. I'm going to get a little more loose uh, with the zebra chair. For the zebra chair, you do the same effects. You work dark uh, to light and begin by adding just some of that beige undertone. So even if this seat happens to be, um, you know, just white and black, by adding the sunshine, everything looks a bit better. I don't have my example drawing, so I'm just doing this quickly from memory. Leave white of the page. Go in with cool gray. Or if you want something a little more purple, this is Tombow 553. And if you add some water to that, you get a nice kind of cool color. You can also use just gray markers as undertones. If you would like, that works too. Add a bit more sunshine, leaving white of the page. This look like maple. This is cream, Prismacolor cream. And then end by adding in your zebra stripes, working a little lighter color. I can start with 50, for example, and then move in with something a bit darker. I'm using the fine point if you want to be very exact to outline the edges. And then you can fill in with the broad side of the marker using the nose or the broader side. This goes more quickly. So for the sake of time, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the tip and the broader side just to go more quickly for these quick videos. But if you wanted to have you know, a bit more um, deliberate response, um, then you can use the tip. I feel that inevitably I, <laughs> I get some of these stripes wrong, but that's all right. Refer back to my picture. So this is 50 cool gray that I'm placing in. I get this wrong every time. Uh, but I'm not going to sweat it. You get the idea. I'm going to move to a little darker. 
You could, this is cool gray 90, you can even go black. And go in. And if you want more of a watercolor effect while this is wet, I'm coming back in with the 50. So apply the 90, come back in with the 50. You can even keep these steps going a little um, more gradual if you want. Maybe it's softer at the top of the seat because light's hitting it more. So maybe we don't go as, as dark on the top of the seat. how bold you want to get. The instructions um, in our class modules, the illustrator, the textbook that I used, um, that illustrator actually goes in and, and goes in with black. So you can you can do that as well. So I just I kind of made the bottom a bit more um, of a watercolor effect so you can just see that kind of look very very soft and easy and then above a bit more deliberate. When you're all done, go back in with your cool gray or this blue and just pull back out some of those shadows one last time. And you're done. Experiment, take the time. Um, you know, I do these quickly and, and sometimes I, I like my, the effect. Um, I, I kind of look over here and some of my experiments I even like a little better. Uh, so, you know, it's up to you uh, to kind of explore and, and look at your own style, but the steps will remain the same. Work light to dark, blend, leave wide of the page, and then build up the darker colors and detail.